you know, we've got now a, we got a, really a lot of therapies that we can bring to bear that are well tolerated and, and becoming now more available. I mean, statins are great, uh, but I want to talk about at least a couple of things. One is, what do we do with the statin intolerant patient? Uh, which is a, I, you know, I know you guys see this every day. So do I. Every every one of the panel members see this as a as just a terribly huge burden. What do we do about people who, on the maximum tolerated statin dose, don't have acceptable LDLs? Um, and uh, the, at least I'm going to maybe start it off by saying that, um, in my view, the PCSK9 inhibitors are being underutilized. Uh, they're very effective. Patients do not mind self-injecting. It's not a big burden. Um, we have two trials, one for alirocumab and one for evolocumab, that show uh, statistically significant benefits on you know, morbidity. And uh, in my view, and now the prices have been reduced to a, the point where it's about what uh, branded resubastatin cost near the end of its life cycle, you know, and that drug was used very widely. And, you know, it's in the same ballpark with what branded atorvastatin cost near the end of its lifestyle. And the question is, how do we get into this mess where we're not able to get patients to LDL goals because of the pushback on the use of the drugs? Absolutely. And just uh, before PCSK9 inhibitors, uh, what about ezetimibe? You mentioned ezetimibe in passing there. It's a safe drug, it's cheap, it's generic, a modest LDL reduction, but you know, two co outcome trials that have shown benefit, improve it, and, and now more recently, Utopia. I, I know in the past, Steve, you've thought it's a really modest LDL reduction, but now that it's generic, what, what are your thoughts I about I use it all the time, but I also am cognizant of its limitations. I, I think the mistake a lot of people make is that the reported lowering of LDL with azetamibe is the mean effect, and that many people often respond to greater extent, especially when they're on statins or if they have familial hypercholesterolemia, mm -hmm. both who become hyperabsorbers. And so uh, the reason it's in our current guidelines is because it's worth trying, mm -hmm. uh, because you may get a greater than expected response. You may not. And some people may feel that, that the, the distance they need to go is so much they want to move right to a PCSK9 inhibitor. But I don't think it's unreasonable to consider trying is Well, and the, that's the, what the data says. Yeah, support. right, the guidelines say that's a second-line agent right. right after statins. And so we've had, we've had a good experience with it as well. And as a practical point, many third-party pairs, depending at least on the region of the country, and won't let you go to the PCSK9 they, they, they won't. without the azetamide on board. I also think we have to be reasonable in understanding that improve it while it was statistically significant was a 6% reduction after seven years. So it was a pretty small reduction in, in, in morbidity in a very long trial, not a huge effect, but gosh, I'll take it, you know, and for a generic drug, you know, so I get somebody, particularly if they're close to goal, they're close to where I want to get them. I can, I can get them there with a Zenomide by will. And it was a good side effect profile too, right? Yeah, very, very well. And, and, and it taught us a very important piece of information, which is that when you're at the low end of the LDL scale, those patients were below 70 and improve it. If you're not going to change LDL a lot, you've got to treat them for a long period of time to see a benefit. Right. So it gets back you, to the area under the curve right. concept. Yeah, for it LDL, does. It does. And so it's a, another great thing for younger patients. And for people who don't want to take a statin, I mean, it gives you some real opportunity to, to, to do them some good. The problem I run into is I have somebody that's on the maximally tolerated statin dose and who maybe their secondary prevention and their LDL is 110. And the question is, am I satisfied with dropping the LDL from 110 to 95 or am I not? Well, we, oh, well, will the insurer pay for it? Is the question. Well, and so, so, so we've been, you know, we've been hammering the the, the third-party payers pretty hard, and we've been successful at getting them to approve a lot of our patients for a PCSK9 inhibitor. And of course, even without azetamibe. As no, part you know, of we usually have azetamibe on board, but you know, there these are people who still have higher LDLs than we believe to be desirable, and the wonderful thing about uh, 
PCSK9 inhibitors, there's no diminishing returns on top of statins. I mean, if you're at 100, if your LDL is 100, and you add a PCSK9 inhibitor, you're going to get to 50. But, but, will, but will insurers uh, pay for it, uh, for an LDL, uh, you know, they're on statin, ezetimibe, what is the lowest level of LDL that they'll pay for? Is it 70? So the patient has to be above 70, and the insurer will pay for Because I think primary care physicians need to know it, this it, information. It's highly variable, and it also depends on how well one articulates. So we have a whole team of people that deal with this. Unfortunately, we have to spend a lot of resources in order to, to get through it. Now, now, I'm not a big fan of pharmacy benefit managers. Uh, I am, have been extremely critical of them because they're not public health organizations. You know, they're, they're interested in one thing that's called money, you know, and if they can keep you from using the drugs, they make more money. And I don't think that's even morally acceptable. So I fight them pretty hard. Yeah, no, I agree with you. What about utopia? What do you guys think about that? Well, I think that the, for me the take home was that the benefit in the elderly. Uh, that's a group people have said, uh, do they have benefit or not? They had benefit in Jupiter. They had benefit in utopia. So I think it is a group that has benefit.